Hello, this is Bern, and if you're honest with yourself and realize that you've been chasing men and you don't like the way it feels, you don't like the results you're getting from it, I'm going to share with you how to stop doing that to get a lot more of what you want and a lot less of what you don't. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to your great LifeTV.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart-centered, and successful women like you, how you can attract the kind of quality man you want and step into the most alive, feminine version of you without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or crazy techniques. Now, if you've noticed, as I said in my intro, that you've been chasing men, and the kind of connections that you get to create as a result of chasing men is guys who are not really interested in pursuing you, then I'm going to suggest a couple of alternatives to start, to stop doing that, stop chasing men, and then what you can do instead to get a lot better results with men. So first the definition, what is chasing men? Chasing men is heavily pursuing a guy, mostly initiating contact with him, mostly following up when he hasn't responded to your initial or initiation messages, taking it upon yourself to ask him out on dates, paying for the dates, uh, taking on the masculine role in the pursuit of a dating dynamic. Now, so as much as I'm asking you to stop doing that, I'm asking you to stop pursuing men either. The difference between chasing and pursuing to me is chasing has a much more heavy, needy connotation than pursuing. Pursuing would be a more elegant way to go about it, where neediness is not the primary force that's driving that interaction but still something that I highly discourage you to do as a woman. Now, before I go forward, let me share with you that this message, this video isn't for everyone. If you're the kind of woman who prefers initiating, who prefers pursuing a guy, if you're the kind of woman who prefers taking him on versus being taken, if you prefer, for lack of better metaphorical connotation, penetrating someone, emotionally, physically, versus being penetrated emotionally, physically, then you should not listen to my video, move on. If you are, however, like the vast majority of women I've connected with, who in their heart of hearts, despite the fact that they might be very powerful in their work, prefer to be pursued, prefer to be uh, courted versus having to do that, then this message is for you. So what do you do instead of chasing a guy if that's what you've been doing, or pursuing men, if you haven't taken it to the extreme of chasing? Well, the first step is you want to make it a point to shine more frequently. That means a deeper expression of your emotions and heart, to practice being more open, to connect from that place of shiny openness, and to lean back. So that's the first step. The first step is figure out a way to reconnect, and I've been saying this in most of my videos recently, to reconnect to your radiance, to open 5% more, 10% more, 2% more even, and from that place, figure out what's possible and what can happen. Why do I say this as a first step? Because if you're more open, if you're more radiant, you will have exponentially more options at your disposal than if you're going at it from a cynical, closed off, meh perspective. Now, after point number one, point number two is defined what kind of man you want in this specific dynamic. The dynamic I'm talking about is, do you want a man who knows what he wants, who is willing to put in the energy to pursue you, not chase you because you don't want a guy who chases you, you want a guy who pursues you. If you want a guy who pursues you, the guy who is asking you out on dates versus you asking him out on dates, the guy who when the dinner check arrives, he takes out his wallet and pays without waiting for you to do that. If you prefer for a guy to open your door versus you open up his door, if you prefer for a man to take the initiative and the leadership role in this getting to know each other dynamic, then the fine that's what you want. If that's not what you want, as I said earlier, no need to even listen to the next few steps, because once you're clear on what you want, then you can more clearly say, this man who is not doing that and is not willing to step up into doing that is not for me. Might be good for somebody else, but not for the, the want, the craving that I have in my heart. Number three is create more options. Why do I want you to create more options? Because something that happens very frequently is you connect with a man, you like him, you feel chemistry, you kiss him and he's a great kisser, and then you cut off all other options before vetting him, before knowing if he's a good friend, before knowing if he really wants a long-term relationship, before knowing what his thoughts are on family, marriage, important things that would make it a showstopper for you if he believes differently than you do. 
And if you don't create more options, then it's going to be hard for you to lean back because if that guy doesn't show up and all of a sudden you have nothing, you're back at square zero. But if you have more options, then it's going to be easier not to have to play a game, but to simply relax and say, if he's not showing up, here's three other guys who are showing up and have one rise to the top in terms of connection, friendship, compatibility. Uh, number four is state your preferences. Guys have been punched in the face and the heart emotionally multiple times and many times not, don't know how to act. Sometimes they have some habits that are not necessarily helpful for the dynamic of dating. Sometimes they have stepped into more of the masculine role and women have shut them down. So if you're a woman who's more on your feminine and you prefer for a guy to take the leadership position of courting you and pursuing you, then when he connects with you, ask him a simple question. What makes you feel excited about dating a woman? Have him share what he wants and then share what you want. Say, I love it when a guy takes the leadership role of pursuing, not chasing, because you're not desperate, you don't necessarily uh, need me to for your happiness, but a guy who is willing to be courageous, step up as a man and lead. That means initiating contact, that means asking out on dates, not saying that you have to do that, I'm saying that's how I thrive on the dating dynamic. Once you've established that, once you've clearly voiced out that that's your preference, he can either say, I have now permission to do that and I'm going to do it more or I don't like it. I want you to pursue me just as much. In which case, you have two options. One is saying, yes, I'll do that or option two, I'm going to move on and connect with a guy who's going to take on more of that leadership role in the dating dynamic. And not, it's not, this is not a politically correct thing to say. I know. And if you want to throw tomatoes at me, have at it, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. What I'm saying to you right now is regardless of what, if, if you're one of those human beings who believe that this relationship thing is 50-50, uh, I'm going to say that doesn't work. I haven't seen that work. It's 100-100, but not in the exact same way. It's not I pay for 10 dates, you pay for 10 dates. Maybe the dynamic is something more of um, opposites attract each other in some way. Maybe it's more of uh, your masculine attracts feminine. There's a polarity in the type of dynamic you can establish with a man. And that's what I'm talking about. If in your heart of hearts, you prefer for a guy to show up stronger, then it's okay. Even if your friends have told you that's weak, even if your friends have told you, you should do the same. If you like a guy, ask him out on a date. I'm saying don't do that because it's unnecessary to get to the type of relationship you want. I'm not saying don't show up. I'm not saying don't be radiant because that's your share of the equation. But if you're showing up with radiance and an open heart and vulnerability, the counterpart to that is a guy who knows what he wants and is initiating and connecting with you, asking you out on dates and moving the needle forward. Number six, number five, I'm sorry, is evaluate. Once you state your preferences, once you know, like, evaluate, does a guy step up? D are you compatible with him? Is he showing up strong? Is he showing up weak? Is he consistent? Is he cotton cold? And then step number six is make a determination if you want to progress because it's going in the right direction if you need to recalibrate or if you need to move on because the type of connection that he has with you is not the one you're seeking. Now, let me be clear when I say this. Not every guy can do it this way and not every guy feels this is the right way. Many guys are going to feel this is the wrong way to do it. I'm asking you right now to first define for yourself how do you want to date and if your preference for dating is this type of dynamic where you're not chasing men, you're not pursuing men, men are not chasing you but they are pursuing you, then it's worth it for you to express what you want and move forward from men who can't do it this way. Hope this is helpful, insightful, and useful to you in some way. If it is, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, first line on the description of this video, I've created a free masterclass that shows you how you can step into the kind of relationship you want, avoiding unnecessary pain. All you do is click on the first link, enter your name and email, and you can start watching that free masterclass right away. The next two things I'm asking you to do is if you enjoy this, click like or thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can watch videos as they come out. Click the little bell if you want to be notified of new episodes. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.